My first question is, what is your opinion about um, machine intelligence and its application potential? Well, you know, I have been interested in those issues for a long, long time. And I've written a paper called Thinking Machines more than 50 years ago. <laughs> and uh, so obviously enough, um, machine intelligence is something that's becoming more important, more visible. But uh, my views are somewhat different from the views of the AI community. And the AI community, up to a certain point, uh, believed that many of these problems uh, can be solved through the use of symbolic logic. Uh, now, uh, I have great admire symbolic logic, but I think that symbolic logic is not really uh, the way to deal with machine intelligence because humans do not use symbolic logic. Not only just zero and one, but something yes. more. So humans, so fuzzy logic is much closer to human logic than symbolic logic is. So when you talk about machine intelligence, we should use fuzzy logic and not symbolic logic. But the AI community has always been somewhat skeptical about fuzzy logic and sometimes antagonistic toward fuzzy logic because of its clash with symbolic logic, you see. But, the, but the, the, within the AI community today, things have changed. So the thing that is fashionable today is what some people call new AI. And new AI is oriented toward probabilistic computations, in particular Bayesian nets. That is what's fashionable today, Bayesian nets, which is completely, completely different from symbolic logic. So, but my own thing is to move in the direction of perceptions. I did not talk about perceptions in my own lecture here, it was concerned with some of the different issues, but that, that's what I do believe is the direction understanding how humans can do so many things so well without using any measurements, any computations. Uh, right? The next question is, what is the most important uh, research question in this domain, in, in domain of machine intelligence? To, if, me, if to, me, there is yes, to me, yes, there is. To me, the most important question, uh, or the most important application, is that of adding deduction capability to search engines in the internet. Today's it's also about your speech. That's right. Today's search engines, and Google is the best example, have many remarkable capabilities, but they don't have deduction capability. And this is what's very important. So what would be extremely important, if instead of having a search engine, you had a question-answering engine. See? A question-answering engine consists of a search engine plus deduction module. In other words, it gives you some information. The answer may be that. But then you have to do something to come up with the answer to the question. And today's search engines don't have that. They just search. They just search. So if uh, you had a question, even simplest question, simplest, like how old is Bush? It wouldn't answer that question. It would send you to a website with, you know, this, that, but it wouldn't answer that question, you see. And, uh, and furthermore, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, it doesn't understand that there is no answer. For example, if you said, who is the king of France, all right? It would, yeah. It will not say there is no king of France. It would send you to here yeah, and there and so. This page and this page. How many, how many PhDs were granted to horses in Slovakia? <laughs> Ask questions like that. Stupidest yeah. thing. You will try to come up with some answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you think that world should discuss the problems of robot and human interaction? If you think that world should discuss robots, oh, robot no. and human in interaction. 
Uh, well, it's an important problem, but frankly, I don't believe in the sort of thing that this movie AI, you know, I, it's to me it's ridiculous. It's Hollywood product. It's not really a serious uh, sort of a thing. Uh, so that uh, there is interaction, uh, but what form that interaction will take and how long, and that, that's something that's very difficult to anticipate at this point. Today, robots can do only extremely simple things. Extremely simple things. Okay. Uh, what is the most important aspect of these uh, technologies for real-world applications? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, uh, you know, that's a very big question. Yeah. It's the kind of a question that's very difficult to answer. Uh, because what's the most important, you know, whatever the case might be, it's very difficult to answer. Uh, so that uh, I think that, and I want to return to that theme again. To me, the most important one is question answering capability. Because even robots, in order to do certain things, they have to answer some question in the mind of the robot. You see, you want to avoid an obstacle, uh, some questions arise. Is there something there or isn't there something there? So, uh, one thing that should be remembered is this. Decisions are based on information. You see? So the system has to have a capability to digest information. Today's systems cannot digest perception-based information. They do not have this capability. So that we are actually at a very low stage of our understanding of these problems. We are not at a high level, very low level, very, also, very low level. Also, I have another question. Sure. It's very popular. Sure. Uh, if you think that uh, the brain, if it's possible to brain to be uh, create, or what do you think? If yes or not? Certainly, but in small ways. Yeah. You, see, you see, create, in terms of fuzzy logic, has many meanings. You can create simple things, you can create uh, complicated theory, you can create a symphony, you can create something. Depends. Create what? Yeah. Now let me tell you one thing machine cannot create, okay? Compose melodic arias. Cannot do. A computer can compose some sort of a music. But if you said, can a computer compose melodic aria the way Tchaikovsky could, or Verdi could, or Benizetti could, 